So welcome to the Social Stack, your go-to channel for marketing needs based in technology for your real estate business. I'm Amy Stack, and today we'll be talking about creating a Google form to help capture information for CMAs. And we've already got my screen shared here. So basically what I'm going to show you guys is a couple of things. We can go into as much detail as to show you how to get it on a website. Um, this is the Gores Group website. As you can see, they do have this form already created and it's actually embedded on their Keller Williams site. So if I scroll down on this, what's your home worth page, you can see there's a form right here on their website. So anybody could stumble across this or you could send somebody directly to this page as well. Um, the, I, the most, uh, I don't want to say difficult, but the thing that's going to take you the time as far as this page goes is actually building this form here that we're seeing. So that's what we're going to go over today. And it is just a simple Google form. You don't have to embed it in a website. You can just share the form link with somebody. You can make a QR code that goes directly to the form. You can do all kinds of things with it. This is just how one team is using it in their business. Any questions about that so far? Yeah, we can go over that too. The, so the main part of today is going to be the Google form and then how to make a QR code to go to it. If you guys want to stick around, I can show you how to put it in the website too. So, um, all right. So with that said, has anybody in here or on Zoom, feel free to put in the chat or unmute. Has anybody made a Google form before? Got a couple hands in the room, a couple of iffies. All right. Anybody on Zoom ever made a Google form? These are old ones. Me, a couple of yeses. Okay, so um, because it seems like there's a, a good mix, we'll start I'm going a little slow. If I'm going too fast, you let me know. I'll slow down. Um, but what you need to do is log into a Gmail account because it is a Google form, so it's connected to Gmail, which is the Google email platform. So you can see I'm in my email right now. You have to read the Gmail that is associated to. It does not. It can be any Gmail account. That's a great question. So it does not have to be your KW email. It can be any Gmail that you want. Just know that all of the answers will be then connected to the email account you create the form from. And the form will live in the drive of the email account you create it in. So I'm in my drive. If you guys don't know how to get to that, when you're in your email, you can just hit those nine little dots at the top right and hit the drive triangle. So that's what I did to get to my drive. And this is all my stuff that I've already got stored in here. And up in the top left, there's a button that says new. So you can go ahead and select new. And then you want the little purple one that says Google Forms. So I'm not going to build the entire form right now. I'm going to show you how to use the different elements because thank you all for coming. I will send you my template. Yay. <laughs> a, template for the a template for the form. So this is my form right here. So you can see it looks a little different than the one on the website. We're also looking at, at the creator view, not the, how the public would see it. But you can see it says questions, responses, settings at the top. So you can toggle through a few different things here. But I will send you a copy of this that you can copy into your own account. So you won't be able to edit mine, but you'll be able to make a copy and put it in your own account. And then you can customize these questions, okay. these pictures, whatever you want. And you'll be able to help us with that. Mm -hmm. too. We'll do that during the workshop part. Absolutely. So this is separate from going into the website. This is what we're going to put in the website. Good question, Anna. Yep. So you have to build the form before you can put it in the website. Yeah. Well, I, well, I haven't gotten to this part yet. This is where we're going. The form doesn't get there. Is that in like all the apps for? So just go to your drive and hit the new button. And one of the drop down options will be Google Forms. It's going to be a purple little square. Google Forms is what we're looking for. And that will make a blank form. So that's where we're going to start. So from your blank form, it start. It always says untitled form. You got to name it. What are the people filling out? What are they doing here? So I'm just going to put CMA test for this one. OK. And then you can see, you can play around with some formatting in here if you wanna make it bold or italicize it, something like that, you can play with that. Then there's the form description. So the name is what it is. The description is any information you want to provide to them, why they should be filling out the form, uh, what they're gonna get from it, anything like that that you feel like they need to know. If you're doing, you could use a Google form for a raffle. So if there's a date that they have to have it entered by or a date that you're announcing a winner, you can put that in the description so that they know it right there. Um, for the CMA, we don't have to do anything like that. Yes, Michelle. Oh, wait, can somebody give Michelle the, the mic? 
Oh, so Michelle asked if untitled form will disappear. It will not. You have to type. You have to put something there. It's the title of your form. So whatever. I had the same. Okay. Yeah. So if you just start typing in that field, it'll override the untitled form. Oh. It should. Oh, so you you're saying you highlighted untitled no, form and started typing. Mm -hmm. And then that untitled stuff would be at the beginning. Oh, so you just had to delete untitled form, so but it let you delete it and well, put your name yeah, in. I never the name okay. I did, you said I just typed it. Yeah, it went, it went backwards. Okay, so perfect. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't need to stay there. You can definitely delete it, but yeah, you might have to type in first to be able. Usually, you just type right over it. I don't know. Maybe it's being funky today. Google's got a mind of its own. <laughs> but so that's the title of your form. And then again, like I said, you can put a little description in there. I'm just gonna put test again. We don't need to put a description right at this moment. This is the fun part, our question section. So right now it says untitled question and it just says option one. Okay, but that's probably not what all of our question formats need to be, right? So we have a lot of different things we can do here. I'm gonna click on that untitled question and you can see I have some new options that have now appeared. Let me move my Zoom stuff to the top here. One second, Zoom, sorry, there we go. Okay, so now I have selected the question. Uh, I can put in a question here. I also on the right hand side have a drop down. Currently it's selected on multiple choice. There are several options of types of questions you can put in here. So if you do want to provide a multiple choice where they must choose A, B, or C, choose the multiple choice option. If you want something that's like, please provide me with some information and they have to type info in, there's a short answer, there's a paragraph answer that gives them more characters. So you can toggle through these different types of questions here. A checkbox will allow them to check multiple answers, whereas multiple choice, they have to choose one of the multiple choice answers that you've provided for them to select from, okay? So we always wanna do something like, name, right? So that would be a short answer. Oh, I didn't type in the box there. So name, and I have short answer selected right here. And at the bottom right hand corner of that square, there's this little toggle that says required. So I, for most of my questions, I leave that toggle on. So when it's purple, it's on. When it's white, it's off. So if it's on, that means they cannot submit that form without filling out the answer to that question. So we want to turn that button on. So we do want to turn that button on. That is right. Now, let's say you have done all this formatting here and you're like, all right, I want to do another short answer question. I don't want to have to go through and click to change all those things every time, right? At the bottom of our square of our question, or I guess rectangle, just to the left of the trash can, there's a copy or a duplicate button. And if you hit that, it will duplicate the question exactly as it is. So you can see my first question is now in there. It says name and there's a little red asterisk next to it. So now I can see that it's required and my question's in there and it's already started the next question for me, still has the required button toggled, still short answer and still says name. So now I can update it and I can say like phone number or whatever information you're looking to capture, but I don't have to re-choose short answer. I don't have to re-click that uh, required button. So that's the basic short answer question. I feel like that's what I see most often on Google Forms. I'm going to go ahead and show you these buttons on the right. There is a plus sign. So if I hit that plus sign, that will just start a new section for me. And you can see it's back to that multiple choice option. That's just the default. So if you don't need to duplicate your question, you can always just hit that little plus sign and that bar, as you can see, as I scroll kind of moves up and down the screen. So it'll follow you wherever you're, you're working. Um, if you notice, let me move my Zoom stuff again. On my form, I actually have some pictures embedded right into the question. So when my clients go to look at this, this is how they see the form. And that picture's right there. So a property address, I wanted a pretty picture of a house. So they kind of have an idea of what we're talking about, right? Here we can go property type. So here's different types of houses. Here's a bedroom because I'm asking how many bedrooms they are. 
So I'm gonna show you how to embed the pictures into that Google form now. I like your pictures, Erin. They're, they're just from Google, yeah. Um, most people that have had some listings will put in their own custom photos just because they want to make the form a little bit more personalized to themselves. Um, I have had people do photos that are have some branding in it, so that kind of like matches all their colors. They look for homes that have the same colors in the home that they do in their logo. So if you guys want to take it to that level, you can definitely do that. Um, like I said, I will share my template, this one with you, so you'll have all of my pictures already. And they're just um, like free stock photos that are in here. So to add a photo, or if you guys want to change one um, of, of the templated ones, when we do, let's do, I'm just going to do bedrooms. We'll say that's the, the one that we're creating. And I want multiple choice, or you can do short answer, whatever you want, but I'll do multiple choice and we'll say one bedroom. We can add another right here, add other. We can do two bedroom. Can't type in it. There we go. Having struggles today, you guys. There we go. Oh, I didn't want to hit add another. I hit the wrong button. That was my fault. So two bedroom, three bedroom, right? As many bedrooms as you want to offer. This add other one, the first thing I click that's in the blue, that is literally a button that says other and will prompt them to write in an answer. So if you're doing multiple choice and you think somebody might have an answer that's not one of your multiple choices, you can click that add other option and it will give them the opportunity to type in whatever the correct thing is for them. So I've named my, my question here, I guess you shouldn't just write bedroom, how many bedrooms does your home have? Right now, if I keep looking, oops, I typed that wrong. If I keep looking to the right of where I just typed that question, you'll see a little uh, photo icon. If I tap that, it will allow me to upload photos. I can pull things from my Google Drive if I have a photo in there. I can browse images on my computer. Let's see if there's anything on this computer. These are all PDFs. Okay, here's an image. I don't know what it is, so no judgment for whatever pops up right now. You guys ready? What is it? What is it? Oh, it's our mission. Great, mission, vision, values. That's a good picture. Obviously, it's not a bedroom, but you would have your bedroom picture and you would upload that right in um, to that section there. So that's how you bring the, the picture into the Google form so you get something like this. Any questions? I see Charlie has his hand raised. Yeah, I you have to type them in well no one came up and said you can do that and it went one two three four five and then you type in so sometimes the options will if, if you start typing in one sometimes google recognizes you're putting in numbers maybe i'm gonna google will suggest oh you put in one is your next thing two that you want to choose and you can just select yes i want to you can type in whatever you want. So I have here. Does that go into after the question that says short answer? So, oh, Charlie, so you're on short answer. You need to change short answer to multiple choice. Yep. Yep. So that's the only way to get those little bullet types. And then Anna asked, how do we get other to come up? So when you are in, let me take mine off. When you are in the Google form question box, so I have my picture in there, I'm already on multiple choice, right? So I've typed in one, two, and three. The next option where it says add option or add other should be in blue, add other should be in blue. If you just tap add other, that will make it say other for you. And that will provide them the option like to actually type in an answer. So if you yourself clicked to add the option, like typed in the word other, on the form that your clients receive, it will just say other and be a box for them or a, a circle for them to click. If you use the Google add other option, it will allow them to type in an answer as well. You guys understand the difference between those two a little bit? I can see it on here because it's not highlighted like. Um, right, you're right. It's not highlighted. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Let's take a look at it. Up in the top right-hand corner here, you have an eyeball. So you hover over it, it says preview. So I'm just gonna preview my test one exactly how it is right now. 
And you can see this question that we're talking about it says one bed, two bed, three bed, and it says other. And if I were to select that, now I can go ahead and type in that space. If you don't use the Google form option that says add other and you literally type the word other, it will just be another little radio button like bedroom one, two, and three. It won't give the option to type in any text. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, so how do you go back? Uh, it just opened a new tab. So I'm just gonna close that tab I'm in and then we're gonna go back to our Google form. So you guys can add as many questions as you want. You can embed as many photos as you want. Okay, back to the photos. How do we get the photos? I'm sorry. So the photos, um, Carol asked how you get the photos. It's just wherever you have them. If you have a listing photo you want, if you wanna do something like Pixabay or shutter photos, you wanna purchase photos, if you wanna take your own photos, wherever you wanna get them from, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll just download them to your computer and then when you hit that photo icon button here you can hit browse you can hit upload you can if you already have them in your google drive you can hit google drive you'll see a bunch of photos that i have in mind i've got photos all kinds of stuff in here there's my headshot so you could pull something that's already saved in your google drive as well I would say either do Google Drive or upload. I think they're just the easiest ways to do it. But look, you can even do Google image search right here. And you could say, what well, we're talking about bedrooms, right? So here's a bunch of bedrooms on Google. And I could click one of those and hit insert. Yeah, and see it just swapped that mission vision value for the Google image search I just did. So there's a few different ways you can do it, but if you if you have specific photos that you want because they're branded to you, they're from your listing, stuff you want to feature, you just upload them to your computer or your Google Drive, and then they'll then you'll just upload them to uh, the form from there. What? Yep. And then how would you undelete that picture? Say you click the wrong picture and you're like, I want something else. How do you? Oh, so it, to swap out the photo, you, you you can't necessarily go back, but you just hit that image about a button again. So like, let's say I load this photo in and I'm like, that's not a great shot of a bedroom. I don't want to use that. Just hit that photo icon again and it will take me back to where I was. So I happen to be in the Google search. So it's still in Google search, but I could go then click upload and then I could upload my own image. From and it will just replace it. And it will just replace it. Okay. Yep. So if I go back to Google search and type in bedroom again, you guys remember it was a kind of a white bedroom, just like the corner of a bed that we saw. We will do something like this one right here in the middle where it's that platform bed with the lights in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and hit insert and you can see now it's the new image. Oh, right here, yeah. So you can always, this is for like aligning it and then this is to change it and this is to remove the total photo, like the whole thing. Yeah, so if you put an image in, that's a good question, Michelle. If you put an image in and you're like, wait, no, I don't want an image at all. You can just hit remove and it will go away. Change replaces the photo with a new photo. So we'll just click another one. And now I'm putting that new photo in there. Like that bed's actually made, I like that one more. <laughs> so that's how you kind of manipulate the different types of questions on the Google form and how you can add questions, make them required, right? Add different answers for people to choose from. That's the actual question part of the Google form. You'll notice on, on mine here, I have a nice little header it's gray, it's not purple. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can update the look of the form as well. So I'm gonna go back to that one we were editing. So right now we're just looking, adding questions. Nothing's really been customized about the color at all. Oh, you know what, before I do that, I see some questions in the chat. Give me one second here. Um, how do I add more options? Where did you select delete for photo? Okay, so we'll go over that one more time. So to add more options, you just click the add option button and you start typing in what the option is that you want. And then deleting the photo, if you hover over the three dots at the top left-hand corner of the photo, you'll have a remove option. And then you can see there's even add captions. So if you wanted to put a caption in there, you could do that as well. And these will align it. So if you look at my final one, see how these are, that one's to the left of the, the form. I didn't play around with the alignment at all. That's just how it dropped in. So if I wanted to make it centered, I could hit center 
And now when we preview this form, this is kind of a bigger photo, but it's centered nicely in that box instead of being pushed to the left hand side. All right. Oh, and one other question came in. Oh, perfect. Just a thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about that header and maybe customizing the colors of your Google form. All the way at the top, near the right hand side, so you guys see that purple send button. If you go to the left of that, there's a few icons. So there's um, a, something that looks like a painter's palette, right? Like a little artist palette. If you click that, it's just, it should say customize theme. And if you click that, this little drawer will open up on the right hand side. And you can change, uh, play around with fonts if you want to in here. There's a spot to upload a header image. We'll come back to that. And then there's some color options. So right now you see purple is selected. You know, KW is a nice red color. So we're gonna go ahead and hit red and you can see now it's updated the whole feel of that form there. And I picked the color. So that's this bar at the top, that's that red color. And then you can see it says background and there's a few other options. So if I want the background to be darker, I can select that. Or if I want it to be white or gray, I can select that too. So you can play around with these colors here. And then the create um, image under the, or choose image under the header image gives you a few options. Let me move my zoom buttons. So there are several headers already created inside Google Forms that you guys can use. So you don't have to create something from scratch. They've got some categories on the left. It, the first one is work and school. So to get there, that's this choose image option under header. So there's a whole bunch in there already. I don't know if any of these are house related. If you guys see, see anything something, I'm just going to choose the So the, this right here where I hit choose header image. Yep. I'm under the paint palette still. Yep. So then under there, these are all the ones that Google has created and given you guys free access to use as needed. So think about if you're doing, look at if you're doing a client event with a barbecue, you can use that barbecue header, right? Um, so you just, you can choose any of these. Here's a cute little Halloween one, hit insert, and it's going to update the top of your form. So those are the ones that Google has provided for you. Notice that when I chose that header, it changed my coloring mm -hmm. because it's choosing colors that match that header. Now you can absolutely come back to that color section and play around with it and change it. There's even a plus sign. So if you wanna come back and find that, that red color again, you can click on that, hit add, and now I'm back to my red, okay? If you have a header that you've created in command or in Canva or whatever your favorite graphic design system is right where we were after we clicked that choose image it brought up like i said the google form ones or the google ones that are already created but if you look at the top we've got a couple of toggles here so i have an upload button so i can upload my own image that i've created there's also a photos button which will again take you to your photos which we don't have any on this computer so that's okay uh, but if you have something you want to upload, you can just hit that upload button, hit browse, and then find it on your computer and upload it to the form. Um, let's see if we have any images. Here's that same image, I believe. So this one won't fit in here, but this is a good example. You can see this image is bigger than the header. So it lets me drag it to see what part of that image I actually want to highlight in the header. Can't adjust it, you can't adjust it. Good question. So there's uh, just because the, the way, so some of the photos you can because of how big they are and the sizes and everything. So like, see how I can do this. So I can make it smaller. I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. It, this, when I resize by dragging these squares, it's keeping the ratio the same. So Right, but so I can't ever make the header taller. Like this yeah. image is taller than would fit in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just tried to and it didn't work. So now I know I can. Perfect. Go ahead, Sarah. Do you know what's the size? Like if I were to create oh, good question. More, so, what is the size? 
Sarah asked, what size is this? Like, what is the size of the image that Google's actually looking for? I don't know it off the top of my head, but you can absolutely Google it. And if you use Canva, there is a template type already. So if you go into Canva and search for Google header or Google form, I think it's called Google form header. Um, it's already formatted for you. Uh, I think command has email headers as well or something. I'd have to double check. It's been a while since I've made one in, in command. Um, and then I see a question in the chat. Can I modify the form in the future once I save it? Yes, good question. You can absolutely modify the form when, once it's up and running and live, you can still come in and make updates to it. So any questions about adding that header or the colors, anything like that? When I go down. Oh, so that is because we're on the editing page. That's showing you what question you're selected on. So that won't be there on the, the final product. Good question. <laughs> yeah, that's the image. So that blue line there is just showing me that I'm clicked on that question right now if I want to be making edits. So if I choose the name one, you can see the blue bar jumped to that name one. So good question. All right, so I'm going to close that theme little drawer that opened up there. There were little bats at the top. And then I already mentioned this, but you can hit this preview button and you can see how your clients will view it. So this is what it would look like if a client came to your, your Google form. I'm gonna close that. And then here's the stuff that you're gonna really wanna pay attention to. There's this lovely settings button. This is the part that I see people miss the most. People are like, okay, I can make the form. I've got it, great, let's send it out. Okay, in settings, there are a lot of options in here. There's this one called responses. If I click on responses, I get more options. I personally like to leave this one on that says collect email addresses. That means that they must provide their email to use the form, okay? Then there's this option to send responders a copy of their response. Do you want them to get a copy? Yes or no? Mine, right now mine's off, I'm gonna click always. So that means anytime somebody fills out my form, they will get an email with a copy of everything they submitted to me. I don't have to send them a recap or anything, it automatically does that. There's also an option that says when requested. So when they fill out the form, it will say, do you want a copy of your answers? If they say yes, then they'll get a copy. I just like to do the always one. It's kind of like a nice way to be like, okay, that form actually went through. Yes, yes, when they submit it, they get that. Um, the next one down here is allow response editing. I usually have that off. It just depends on what your form is for. In this case, maybe you want to turn it on. Maybe they didn't know the type of the roof and they came back and they wanted to update it. So you could you could turn that on. That lets them get back into their answers to make updates. So we should turn that on, allow response editing. That's up to you if you want to turn it on or, or not. I just, in this case, it might be good because maybe they, they hit the wrong thing, right? When they review their answers, they're like, oh, I hit two bedroom. I meant to hit three bedroom. They want to come back and update it. You can turn that toggle on and that will allow them to do that. This third one here, is extremely important for you to toggle the correct direction. It says requires sign and it says restrict to users in the E2P group or yours would say in the KW group if you use your KW email, right? Yes. You need to not limit it. Does that make sense? You do not want to restrict it to people in your organization. So you want everybody to fill out your Google form. If you restrict it and somebody's in, and you use your KW email and somebody is not in KW, which your clients probably aren't, they will not be able to fill out the form. So you need to make sure you take that off. It depends on it. De that's a good question. So Michelle asked, do we have this option on everybody's? It depends on if you're what email you're in. So if you have a free Google account, free Gmail that you're in, you're not going to see that. If you're making this in your KW email, see mine says in the E2P group because I'm using my E2P email. If you're ma making it in your KW email, it will say in the KW group. So just make sure that that's turned off um, if you are using one of those emails. Um, those are the settings that I really wanted to point out for you. What about limit to one response? Oh, and that, that's if you guys want, Carol asked about this limit to one response here. Do you want them to be able to you know, submit multiple responses, yes or no. If you don't, then turn it on. They can only fill out the form one time. If you don't care if they fill it out more than once, you can leave it turned off. 
Then below that we have defaults. So because I chose at the top to collect the email that's already toggled on down here, and then question defaults is make questions required by default, which that's if you guys, we, we did that when we set it up. So if you had missed that you wanted those um, questions to be defaulted, you could turn it on here. And then it should remember it for all new questions you can see right there. Settings applied to all new questions that you add to the form. Go ahead, Sarah. Amy, if you have the default for collect email addresses, do you need a question that says what, like email? Good question. Okay, so Sarah asked if we have this on that it defaults to collect the email address, do we need a question in the form that asks for their email? That is up to you. Some people will be logged into email A, which is the, the email that the form is automatically collecting, but maybe they want you to contact them at email B. So you can give them the option to type in an email if you want to. If you don't care and you just want to see who's submitting it and what email it's coming in from, then you don't need to add the question to the form. Good question. Um, so that's all the setting stuff we didn't look at. The make a quiz the make a quiz is if you want it to be like just populate in any random order depending on who's filling it out so i don't i don't really ever use that option which one make a quiz it's all the way at the top yeah yep so uh i think that's to put it in presentation mode so that is another here let me close these so it's a little easier to see so right here is presentation so you can see, they can see how many um, questions are left, like, oh, you've filled out two of 10, or you're on three of 10. So that's what the progress bar is, if you want to have that on. Question order, or shuffle the question order means that everybody that does it gets the questions in a different order. And I know that that's necessary for this, you know, type of form. Um, and then we have the confirmation message. I do like this one it automatically has your response has been recorded. That's the message that goes out once they hit submit, but you can go ahead in there and hit edit and you can say, thanks so much. I'll be in touch within 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever. I'm looking forward to talking about, um, you know, the value of your home with you, any little message like that. So that is in uh, presentation. And then the after submission, you can edit that message that goes out once they submit it. Questions about that after submission section? Oh, yep, yeah, you just type whatever the message is that you want to go out to them right in that little box and then hit save. So thank you. Be in touch soon. Right, and then hit save. Again, um, I know we're talking about CMAs, but if you were, bless you, if you were using a Google form for like a raffle, this could be another good spot to say, winners will be picked on X day. Like, thanks for your submission. We'll announce the winners on blah, blah, blah day. So that wouldn't necessarily be relevant to the CMA, but just a good little note to take. Um, and then do you want them to see their results, right? So there's this button. There's lots of little things you can turn on and off here and disable auto save i don't ever disable auto save i think that's silly so if somebody starts filling out the form and they don't finish it they walk away and go to the bathroom it'll auto save their progress right if you disable it it won't do that so if they click out of it then they have to redo the whole form again so that's all of the stuff in settings so let me close all of those so did you say disable auto save for all respondents no i leave auto save on that's under presentation. Auto saves under presentation. Lose their progress if the browser closes or refreshes. Right. So you don't want that. You don't want that on. Right. You you want to leave auto save on. You don't want to disable it. Um, I didn't for this one. Yeah, yeah. So Michelle asked it, is that for really long ones? There's also, we didn't talk about this, but when you make Google Forms, if it is a longer one, you can actually break it into sections so they can see one section at a time. So sometimes the progress bar is helpful for that. Right, exactly, exactly. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay. Oh, that's if you want to give them access to see the summary of the results. So I don't think you would really need to do that. Could you do this one? Any other questions about settings? I, oh, I see something came in Zoom. If we are not covering today, um, oh yeah, so Bobby brought up a good, a good point here. So we haven't quite gotten to responses yet. 
um, which we'll go over next. But Bobby did say uh, one nice thing about the Google Forms versus like using a landing page through command is that you can clearly make lots of different questions. You can do lots of customizations. However, the downside is that these answers go into, if I hit responses here, they come into Google Form or a Google spreadsheet. So they're still in Google and you would have to, if, if you're using this to capture leads, then you have to move everybody into command, right? So that's like a manual thing you would have to do. However, if you guys are familiar or it doesn't matter if you're familiar or not, there's a company called Zapier, C-A-P-I-E-R, and it's a freemium service. So you can get five, what they call Zaps for free. And what Zapier will allow you to do is take something from the, the spreadsheet that is automatically created as people fill out the Google form. And it will say, anytime a new answer comes into this spreadsheet, please add it to my command contacts. And it will automatically import it into command for you. So that's a different class, but that is possible. <laughs> so and with the CMA, you might not necessarily need that because if you're sending this to clients already, they're probably already, they should already be in your database, right? <laughs> and it's not just with command. If you guys are using Rivity or other CRMs, it'll, Zapier will work with that. I have an agent using Zapier for um, Curb Hero for open houses. Curb Hero is an app that people can sign into open houses with, and then she has it set up with a zap. So as soon as they fill it out, then that contact goes into command right away too. So they're signing in at the open house and then automatically being entered into her database. So you have to have like a laptop here or? Yeah, for that, it would be, a, or a QR code that they could scan and open it. But yeah, she brings a tablet and it's just nice and open. They just push in their information on the tablet and then it, it comes into her command account. Um, AJ. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, okay, so we're going to talk about responses a little bit more. Let me move my Zoom stuff. Uh, let's see. So responses, let's go back. So this is the page we made the, um, the form on. So we're on questions. If I toggle over to the right to hit responses, you can see we just created this. Obviously, nobody's submitted anything, so nothing's in here. But as responses come in, the information will populate in here and you'll have the option to choose between looking at all of the responses at once and you can see some like pie charts and stuff so you can see you know I had 50 people reply and 25% of them had uh, you know four bedrooms but 50% had three bedrooms if you care about that it'll have some little pie charts and stuff however you can toggle to individual answers and you can look one person at a time and this is another thing please take note of these three little dots at the top right of that first response rectangle, you probably want to click this first option that says get email notification for new responses. Because are you going to remember to come check this form every day? Probably not. But if you hit get email notification for new responses, as soon as somebody fills out the form, you will receive an email to the email that you created the Google form in to say, hey, you have a new response to this form. So then you can come in and check it out and you don't have to remember to come look for the answers every day. So that's a pro tip for you. What about select response destination? You could um, tell it to go somewhere else if you wanted to. So right now it's uh, going into the spreadsheet. It, it will go into a new spreadsheet. That's what this little green button is. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you want it to go to a spreadsheet that already exists, you can hit select what does it say? Select response destination and select existing spreadsheet. And you would have to then follow the path there and connect it to a spreadsheet you already have. Um, honestly, I've never used that feature. I always make a new spreadsheet for my new forms. I guess if you were doing an open house and maybe you have a custom form for every open house because you have the address on it, and then you want all of the answers to feed to one master spreadsheet, that's where that would come into play. Maybe because if you're doing open houses, multiple open houses a weekend, you don't necessarily want two spreadsheets created every week, right? You just want it to all feed to one master one. That's where that would come into play. With the CMA, I don't, my guess is you guys don't already have a spreadsheet to track CMA answers. So you're gonna want Google to just automatically create that new spreadsheet for you for so this you form specifically. Mark that, it's mm -mm. automatic. Oh yeah, it will make the form for you automatically. So okay. let me let me find a, another form I have in Google because these ones I don't have any answers for. So give me one second. I will show you what that looks like. Um, type form. 
search. All right, so let's look at, I think of a good one. A lot of forms in here. Okay, so here's a, a, con a form that I made last year for our contact contest. And if I go to responses, this is where I was saying it was, it was as responses come in, you'll be able to see charts and everything for like overall answers. But I can look at individual responses. So this is just one person at a time. And I have this spreadsheet right here. So if I hit my little spreadsheet button, it puts it all into one nice consolidated spot for me to check out all that information. Did that help answer your question, Carol, on what mm -hmm. happens? Okay, so this will happen automatically. I did not have to make the spreadsheet. As soon as somebody filled out that Google form, the spreadsheet was created automatically. Now, what I was saying is like, let's say you're doing open houses, you're using a Google form to capture information at open houses. You might just want one master spreadsheet for all of that stuff to feed into. So if you make a, a form for one, two, three Main Street, and then four, five, six Park, and then eight, nine, whatever, Glen Ellen Road, whatever it is, you probably don't want to have three different spreadsheets for those. You want it to all just go to one spot. So that's where that other option came into play to connect it to an existing spreadsheet. Does that make sense? Okay. So for the CMA thing, I don't think you'll need to do that. Okay, so that was the response section. Any what questions? Download responses. That's it. So download responses is if you want a downloaded file that you could do something with. So that that's only once they've come in. Uh, and so I don't know if you wanted to print them off for some reason, right? That's what the download response would let you do. Do I see another question came in the chat? How am I notified when a form is completed? So um, as long as you hit this three dots in your form and then hit get email notifications, you will receive an email as soon as the form is completed, every time the form is completed. All right, so that's how to create the form. So we went over questions, responses, and settings. Uh, including the, the theme. Any questions about that? I want to show you how you can make it live. I don't see any questions coming in the chat. Do we need to review anything? Google Form is easier than like Canva and the other things. Oh, yeah. Google, I love Google Forms. I use them all the time. Okay. So the next thing I want to do, remember, you can look at that preview, take a look at everything. I'm going to close this contact contest one just, just to you know check it out one more time before you send it off to anybody. So let's say we're happy with this CMA test. Now I want to send it to somebody. Well, look at that. There's a big purple send button in the top right hand corner, right? <laughs> so if I hit send, I have a few options. It defaults to creating an email right here on the screen. So I can type in somebody's email, put the subject line to the email, and it's already pre-populated saying, I've invited you to fill out a form. And then I don't know why mine's not letting me click that. Usually you can click include form in email and it actually embeds right into the body of the email, which is super nice. However, if you're sending this to a bunch of people, you might not want to have to type in their email addresses, you know, 500 times, right? So we have some other options. We have a link option right here. So I was on the, the little envelope. If I click to the right and click the link, that gives me the link to the Google form. So I can hit shorten URL if I want to make it shorter. I like to do that. Less text is better in my opinion. Um, if you guys wanted to make a bit.ly link to make it even shorter or a tiny URL, you could absolutely do that. There's share buttons to put it on Facebook and Twitter. So there's lots of different ways to share it. But you can just copy this link and come to your email or do it in command or a text through Twilio or hit them up or whatever you're wanting to send it out for. And you could just paste it in there if you use the right buttons. Right, and so now the link's in the email and I can say whatever I want about it and I can blind copy a bunch of people on it. Uh, then the third option, I gotta find the right screen. So is you would blind copy people so you just if I wanted to send it to a whole bunch of people at one time, or I could send it through a smart plan in campaigns, I could send it through a text message, whatever I want. That's just one way to get the link. 
Um, and then and Joe then they can get the link if they scan the QR code. Right? So we haven't gotten to that yet. So we would have to make the QR code first. So this link is the link to the form that the public will fill out. So I've got that link copied right now. So I'm just going to hit paste in the URL field on Google. So when you send that link, this is exactly what they'll get. So you can see that, see what the clients will get. And then this is where you would want to make the QR code for if you're not embedding it in a website or something else. So if you just want it to go straight to the Google form and not have to worry about putting this on your website, you can just use this page right here. And when you're in Google Chrome, you guys see the URL bar all the way at the top here that I have highlighted right now. At the far right, there's a little box with an arrow. If I hit that, there's an option that says create QR code. That QR code will now take you directly to this form. You so, have to push download. Yeah. yeah, so you'd have to hit download to get the to get the image. Okay. And then you put the QR code wherever you want, whether it's on um, uh, the letter, right? You can add it to the letter the, for the golden letter. You can put it on a open house, a sign at an open house to scan to sign in. How do you, I, oh yeah, so what Michelle's asking, how do you get the QR code from here? So you would have to hit download and then it goes into your downloads folder. So then wherever you're putting it, so if it's on a letter, you would have to upload the image to the letter. If you're making a sign at an open house, you would have to upload it to the sign that you're um, you know, putting at the open house and the QR code would just print right on that. If you're using a form a lot, I would recommend saving that download and labeling it like, CMA form link, right? So that you don't have to recreate the QR code every time you want to send somebody to the form. Just save it in your um, Google Drive, save it in your desktop, something on your computer. Um, you can always, you can definitely make a QR code every time you need to, but why spend the extra time if you could just save it on your computer? Well, mm -hmm. You could put that on your business card too. So you could absolutely put that on your business card. Any anywhere you can print, or if you have like a slideshow or something, like you know, at our, our business meetings, the stakeholder meetings, we have a QR code that takes you to all of the files, right? So we put that on a TV screen and then everybody can scan it. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a print piece of paperwork. You could you could put it on swag. You put on a t-shirt, you could put it on like some sort of tchotchke that you're handing out, right? A flyer is just the most, you know, common type of thing. Yeah. Oh, so when you get to the place that you want people to go to, so you pull up the website, do you see in the URL bar at the very far right, there's a square with the uh, arrow? Yep. And then there's generate QR code or create, create QR code. And that's it. So we're gonna to go to. Okay, so I copied that. Okay. And you can do that for any yeah. website. So then we're gonna to go to. Okay, so that is just the Google form and creating a QR code that goes directly to the Google form. Okay. Now, I know some of you guys were asking, how do we get this embedded on my website? So if you guys are interested in sticking around for that, please do. If not, I will not be offended. This is like the next level of things. And I see a question in the chat. We have to go back to oh, Charles, yeah, for that, that particular way to get the QR code, you do have to be on Chrome. It's a Chrome feature. Um, but you can just, you can also just Google if you're not using Chrome, you can just Google QR code generator and you'll have a ton of options that come up. Some companies um, have paid features and you can make custom ones. You can put your logo in it, you can change your color, you can make it look like a house. There's all kinds of fun things to do out there. But of course, oh, you're just going to take you more time to do all that. So. <laughs> Yes, yeah. All right. So mine, for whatever reason, I put in like name, email address, but now email is coming up on top and it says this is one of your selected emails. So
so that's because so yeah so anna's asking she said she put name and email as questions in the form but at the top of the form when the client goes to fill it out it's already putting email address that's because you made it auto capture their email so that spot is going to take the email from whatever they're logged into to fill out the form and then the second question is they they could absolutely put that same email address in there but maybe they want you to reach out in a different email they can type in something different okay. there. Leave it? It's up to you. Okay. Yeah, it's totally up to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of repetitive, so I'm wondering if. Yeah, you don't you don't have to have it on there if okay. you don't want to. It'll always come up on the top. If you if you set up the form to auto capture their email, it will always come Got up it. on the top. Okay. Yes. Wait, we got a yep. The QR code that we create. Mm -hmm. There's a box below it with what looks like a. Yeah, but it was highlighted. Is that something that we can edit? And if we edit it, is it going to change where it goes? Uh, no, so this is the link that the QR code is going to. So you can't change that because if so you change it, it won't go there. Happen. Right. Yeah, you don't want to change this link at all because it's Why this. Is it highlighted? Do you know? No idea. It's this okay. link here in the, the URL. Yeah, so you just want to download it as is. You don't want to change that at all. Okay. Good question. All right. Um, I can't. I went to. I don't know where I am. But how come I couldn't? I didn't get the QR code. I pasted it in my browser. So you're still on the editing page. You need to go to send. And then hit that link. And then that's the link you want. So, well, you want to open that link in another page. So you, you have to put it in another page to open it. Well, I did that. I put it up there. No, you just open this again. Okay, so what do I so do? So X out of that. So hit the eyeball. That's the form. Okay, now. So then you want to hit that and then create QR code. Okay. All right, so. I see QR codes lots of places when I'm doing things mm -hmm. and it's so easy. Yes, I love QR codes. Oh wait, I see something else came in the chat. Oh, Bobby said, thank you. So it's on there now. I don't have to do anything else. Well, you would have to put the QR code wherever you want it to go. Like you gotta put it on the letter or form or something like now. that. So okay, here's my form I wanted on. Okay, hang on one second. So we have, so Charles, I think I added your question. How do you, oh, how do you, oh, no, you asked another question. Hang on. Uh, okay. Got it. How do you add, oh, and so Bobby, I saw you asked about putting it in your website. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel already about how to embed this into your website. So if you guys go to the short youtube.com slash the short, um, the social stack in my short stack section, there is something all about updating websites and there's a, a video on there about how to embed it in your, uh, into your website. So then Charles said, how do you add it to the email or a text message? Um, so you would have to download that Google or excuse me, that QR code and you just upload it into the body of an email or email it to yourself, open it on your phone, save the QR code to your camera roll, and then you can text it to people. Um, so I hope that helps with those questions. Say that again, you can download it on your phone. No, you have to download it on the computer because that's where you created it, but right. you can email the QR code to yourself and save it to your phone and then you can text it from your phone. Would you save it like in notes or would you save No, it would just save to your images, your photos. Oh, it would just save to your photos. photos. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> You're overcomplicating it. All right. And Margaret said, it was hard to see where you went with your cursor to do this. Can you redo QR code? Yeah. So again, when you're in your whatever, it doesn't matter what website you're on. Anytime you're on a website in Google Chrome, where the URL bar is at the very far right, there's a share button. It's a rectangle with an arrow. So if you hit that, there's then create QR code. And that's how you generate the, that's the fastest way I know of to make a QR code. And then Bobby said, thank you. Charles said, got it. An email would have to be an attachment. No, uh, good question, Charles. If you, the QR code is an image, if you're using Gmail, you can embed an image into the body of the email. It does not have to be an attachment. Just keep in mind that if people are 
looking at their email on their phone, they're not going to be able to scan the QR code, right? They'd have to be looking at it on a computer to be able to scan it. Because you can't scan it if, it if you can't use the camera. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So, you guys, I'm going to wrap up Zoom. Thank you for hopping on. I do have um, an appointment who's probably already here. So, I'm going to let you guys go on Zoom. Thank you for hopping in. If we need to do more classes on this, I'm happy to do some extra golden letter classes. Let's see what else we have. Oh, just some thank yous. Thank you. Thanks for coming to Zoom. It is recorded, so we'll get this in the agent drive too for all of you, and I'll put it on my YouTube channel. I'm going to stop the recording, maybe.